seems legit. Hey Legitimates, welcome back to my channel. I would like to apologize that this video is late, uh, but school holidays happened and it is what it is. This is the emu, which you would have seen in the cover, but still fabulously awesome. Um, it is very beginner friendly, hasn't got a whole lot of stuff going on, but it's got enough to make it interesting. So we have a slip pocket in the front, this glows in the dark, this is a magnet, I use rivet magnets, um, but I do tell you in the video when to insert non-rivet magnets. On the back we have a zipper pocket, we have a zipper on the top, and then on the inside we have another zipper pocket and a small little zip, uh, slip pocket. You could exchange this for a cargo pocket if you wanted to. Um, but super sweet, super fun. Obviously this doesn't look sweet, but I mean it can be. And there's a lot of like cool add-on-y stuff that you can do to this. So I'm hoping that this week I'll get through some stuff and I'll cut out another one and we'll do a bunch of random add-ons. But for now, let's stick with the original pattern. Let's go. Right, I have all of my pieces in my tub um, and they're all most of them are clipped to the pattern piece these are the original so it hasn't got all the um, sizing and everything on it and I am going to start with oh it's such an option isn't it maybe we should start with the strap since that's gonna probably take the longest um, I did try and kind of fussy cut this without wasting too much I was mainly focused on like the knives It'll be right. So, on the back of this, we are going to put three quarter inch double sided tape. Uh, this stuff is amazing. I have it on my website for those that don't know. Um, and if you're in America, Sandra has it from the Ghana Sewing Room on her website. This stuff is awesome. It doesn't gum up my needle. It holds the vinyl quite well, I think. So that's what we're going to use. And then I'm just going to pull it off in sections. Maybe. If it never wants to list, kind of rub on it a little bit and it will stick better to the back of the vinyl. There we go. So I've left my ends on so I can fold it under and then place it down. Now you want to just kind of eyeball the middle. Then I'm just going to continue to stick it down the center, like so. Now depending on how wide you cut it, you can either fold it, I'm going to fold it in and over to get like a nice, just a strip like that. Um, but you can also cut it skinnier and then just fold it straight over. The pattern has it straight over, but of course I'm going to do something a bit different because it's who I am as a person. Throw this in the bin. Try and tidy as you go, I promise. It is beneficial. And then when we get to the end, I'm just going to cut a little bit past the end like that so I can tuck that raw edge under as well. And now we don't need strap ends because there's no raw edge. So, now I'm gonna put this back on the table like this. And I'm just going to put a piece of skinnier double-sided tape right kind of on the edge of this. This is gonna just help hold it a little bit while I sew, I hope. I have done this once before, I can't remember how well it went. So let's just do it again. I'm going to start from here. Hopefully pick off the backing. Like that. And then I'm going to fold this to the edge. Like so. And I'm just going to kind of do it in sections. And then over again. And I'm going to stitch down the edge. Now you can do this as you go. Like so. I don't do it all at once. It never stays stuck. You can also attach a crap ton of clips. 
clips are your friend. This, I think I've cut the wrong size just quietly. You're only going to see the tiniest amount of the vinyl, of the fabric, but that's right. Just peel it off in sections, don't do it all at once or it's going to stick to you. Don't know if I'm going to like this strap, we might even make another one. The reason that this is not okay, so I think I've cut the back too wide because by the time I do that over, we're only going to have the tiniest gap. I mean, it'll still be cute, it's just not quite where I was going with this strap. And then I'm going to throw that in the bin because it's the last little bit. Stitch down. You have to work in smaller groupings. Otherwise it all just lifts up. And then all that hard work was for nothing. You can do it without double sided tape. It's just a lot trickier. So again, on the edge here. Just pat it down. Try not to kind of stretch it because your vinyl is a little forgiving and you're, you're likely to stretch it out of shape. And we don't want that. over I mean it'll stick to a point but don't don't do too much see we're just gonna have the tiniest gap now but I'm still okay with that stitch back stitch over you just cut less vinyl. I don't know how I'm feeling about this. Till it's finished and see how I go. Doing short bits at a time means that the sticky tape will work enough to stitch it. You could also glue it, but then you'll have to wait for the glue to dry. So I would consider doing that while you're in prepping mode. Before you start doing all the ironing, you'd glue this together first. Just little bits at a time, as much as you feel comfortable with. Pull off the rest, throw it in the bin. I don't know if I love this strap or not. Stick the end. Fold it over. Back 
back stitch in case we do use it. I mean, it's not terrible. You just can't see a lot. You've just got like this random strippy bit. But I do kind of like it. So I'm going to set that aside. Because this is not a new bobbin. And then I think we might do the insides first because it's on top. So this is the slip pocket. It does say to cut two lining. Uh, but what I did is I cut one exterior, one lining, and just put lining interfacing on both of them. Now I don't tell you anymore in my patterns what interfacing to use, because honestly, use whatever you want. Um, and different countries, because I know I do a lot of like overseas pattern selling, so you would potentially use something different. So I, I don't use Decaville, so I will never tell you which brand of Decaville to use. You just do it based on your judgment. So lining, you always want a lightweight interfacing, and the outside, you want something stiffer. Now, because there's no foam in this bag, there's the end of the bobbin. Because there's no foam in this bag, you want to use a quite stiff exterior, but not the stiff as like a base stabilizer. That's too much. It's going to be a pain to turn and a pain to work with. So I would suggest not doing that stiff. Um, but depending on how stiff your version of stiff is, you could always put two layers of interfacing to make it more stiff. So now I've got a new bobbin, and I you notice I backstitch slowly for that. That is because I don't really feel like fighting with my bobbin today. So I have left a gap in the top. You can also leave the gap in the bottom. Your choice. We're going to use the only pair of sharp scissors I have at the moment. I'm going to rectify that situation this afternoon. After I've done this video. Because I really, I'm already late with it. And I know a lot of you love watching how I make things. Especially my own patterns. So I've cut just slightly more than like a 45 degree angle, it will help turn your points nicer. So now I am going to open up the gap, maybe. Working on it. Ah! There we go. And then push it through. So my lining fabric here is a cotton poplin, so it's a very lightweight, thinner fabric. Whereas this piece is a cotton canvas, which is quite thick. But I both gave them the same lightweight interfacing, interfacing, sorry, not facing. This is what we get. We need to tuck that under and I'm going to iron it flat. But because I don't like to start and stop my videos, we're gonna set that aside to be ironed and we're gonna do the other bits that need to be ironed as well. So I'm going to take one of my linings. I love this. And a Tory pocket. Tory pocket. So this is a lining piece. I'm going to fold it in half, find center top and center bottom because you'll need it later. So you may as well do it now before you've got the pocket in there because it makes it more tricky. I'm also going to finger press this flat to signify my center. All right, so now I can see that. I'm going to take the Tory pocket and fold it in half. I call it the Tory Pocket because it's always the same size, guys. 8 by 12 inches, I can tell you that. I'm going to snip the bottom center. Now, ultimately, you can actually put this wherever you want. I don't want it too high because there is a zipper in the top, so you want to be able to access your pocket easily. But you also don't want it too low because then it's kind of hard to get to. I might go up just a little bit about there. Um, so I have lined up this center point on this piece with that center fold that I did. Makes it much, much easier to see. And I'm going to start in the corner and we're only stitching the long lines. And we want to make sure this stays straight, preferably. And back stitch, swivel, jump to the other side, stitch and back stitch. Along we go. Cut all of these pieces. 
cut these jump stitches, it'll make it easier to cut it in a minute. And then I'm going to fold this over, snip in the center. Now this is going to be tricky because these are curved scissors, but all my other scissors have become blunt. And my lovely Fiskar scissors that I absolutely love, uh, the geckos have started eating the handle. I don't know how to combat that problem. It looks like mice have chewed on the handle, just the orange bit. Uh, so they're going to have to go too, which is very sad because they are some of my favorite scissors. And they have been living mm -hmm. on my magnet, so they must desperately want it. So now I'm going to, when I go to the iron, I'm going to fold this piece up and then iron it up and flat like that. Then I'm going to pull this piece down and iron this seam. If you iron it flat before you turn it, it will be easier to then get it flat and even. Everything is now ironed. You can see that that is sitting flat. Sometimes you have to just roll it a little bit in your fingers to get it to sit properly flat. Um, but we're good. So with this one, I'm just going to top stitch that hole close because it's at the top edge. If you did it at the bottom, you can ignore the hole, but you still need to top stitch this top edge. Hole is gone. That's now ready to attach to the other one. But while we've got this here, we might as well finish this one off. So I have cut somewhere in here. I just had it, so it can't be too far. I cut two different coloured zipper overlays. The glow in the dark blood spatter. This is vinyl, it's going on the outside, whereas this one is going to go on the inside. So I'm going to go up to a four stitch length. I like four, four is happy for me. We're also going to use double sided tape to keep it in place. This is a quarter inch, works perfectly. One, two, and then I sometimes like to do a third piece here so that the bottom doesn't shift while I'm trying to stitch that down. For the most part, I am trying to keep it out of the seam allowances so you don't have to stitch through the glue so much or the double sided tape. Um, but of course you don't have to. So I'm now just going to place this over the top. And stick it down. Now you can see me kind of pulling this up. It is so that the lining doesn't show through the hole. The whole idea is that it's meant to sit flat and flush. So now I'm going to start on the top. So I'm going to fold the pocket down. I'm also going to make sure I've got some nice long tails so I can tie it off at the back. I'm going to start just in. I don't want to start on that corner. It's always messy if you do that. And we're just going to stitch. Then I'm going to take my thumb and I'm going to push on that seam allowance so it's down out of the way as I come around this corner. And then I'm going to push the pocket constantly out of the way from underneath. There's no real magic rule about this, you just want to do the best you can so that you don't stitch it down. Because if you stitch it down, you might come across some drama. So try to avoid it if you can. I have stitched it occasionally. I get like one or two stitches. It is not the end of the world, so long as it's not distorting the overall shape. Thumb, tuck, pivot. You just want to do your best. It's all anyone can ever ask of you anyway. And now I'm nearly back to the start. So I'm going to tug on this back string, which is going to make a loop, and I'm going to take one of the many sewalls I possess, and then just pull on that loop, and it pulls the thread out from the front. One, two, tie it off. And then trim off those tails so we don't get them confused. Push all that out of the way. It will make this quite uneven under this hand because of all the movement that we're doing with the pocket. But just ignore it. It won't distract anything. I've just manually made sure I go through the first hole. And then I'm going to pull, leave lots of tails. Flip it over, pull on it. There's my little loop. Again with the sole. 
pull on that loop and then tie it off. And then it's like a seamless stitching. You can also back stitch. Sometimes a back stitch, sometimes I pull it through. Pulling it through does look nicer, back stitching is way quicker. So take from that whatever you like. Okay. So now on the front, it is so non beautiful. You can add a tag here if you want to. I'm actually going to put my tag on the outside one, on this one. So I won't add a tag here. I'm using a dark maroon zipper because it's, you know, blood color. I might as well cut two of these while I'm here. Ugh. See, all my scissors are blunt. I'm also going to cut the third one and then I can tie it back up and put it away. If anybody wonders how I tie it, I grab it between my thumb and like my palm and then I'm just going to zigzag back and forth over my fingers. I learned that while working at Spotlight actually. It's a really good way to do like thin stuff and fold it. Okay. So I'm going to take this and one of my zipper pulls. Now I do have that fancy zipper pull but I want that on the top of the bag because I think that's the best place for it. Line it up, push it on and you just want to zip it about a third of the way in, no further if you can. Then I'm going to lay the zipper pull along the zipper teeth, grab this, hold it open, this is how I always hold it, and then just lay it underneath here. Now you can put double sided tape to hold this, I just fiddle with it, have it and all that, so fiddle with it so it's centered, and then we are going to top stitch around. Now I didn't check how much tail I left there. If I didn't leave enough tail, I will back stitch. If I did leave enough tail, I can pull it through and tie it off. We shall see. Now that I'm back to right in front of the zipper pull, I can zip it closed. And that way we don't get any distortion and we don't have to change our zipper, our presser foot to the zipper one. So now that I'm here, I'm going to pull it to the back just because we're being fancy today. Now that's not a very long tail. I like longer. The shorter they are, the more fiddly they are. And potentially the longer it'll take you. So I'm going to do a triple knot and then one more knot and then that's it. Because it's short and obnoxious. Done. Continue zipping, uh, it's not zipping, stitching around the zipper. And then when we get back to the start, we're going to go into that first hole like that and then make some decent tails. Pull, it creates a loop. Pull that through. Tie it off. Do three and another one. Lock it in, trim off those tails. So from the outside, we have flawless stitching everywhere. Now the way I've designed the pocket is it should just fall down and be even. So from here, I am going to make sure that the bottoms are lined up and stitch the side together. Pulling this out of the way, now it might be a bit firm because of that vinyl. I also want to go to a two and a half stitch length. That's my joining stitch length and the four is more decorative. And the reason we don't use four on the whole bag is because the longer the stitches, the less strong they technically are. So for decorative purposes, four is fine. Uh, but for joining stuff, you want a closer together stitch, it's harder to undo. And we want to back stitch at both ends and then trim those tails. Oops, missed one. Zipper pocket installed and that looks amazing against the blood spatter. Now let's go back to our other pocket that we started with technically. And our other, that's not the lining piece, this is the lining piece. 
Now you can eyeball this if you're feeling brave. You just want to put it in the center. So I scan, I'm still going to find center top and center bottom. The center top will help you line up the zipper. Center bottom will help you line up the base piece. Trust the process and all that jazz. You can also, again, finger press a line down the center so that you can see where the center is. And then we can take this now. That's the top because blood gravity drips downwards. Doesn't look like it's directional, but technically it is. Then I can just take that center fold, line it up. Now this pocket I want down a bit further. So if you were to put your phone in, it's not gonna poke out the top. So that's where I want it. You can clip it in place if you so desire. I am just gonna top stitch it. And I think it looks nice with the accent color pocket. And backstitch, you can even backstitch twice at the top because that's a stress point. Uh, so if you, whoever you're making it for, if they're rough with their bags, it'll be stronger because it's double backstitched. But there's the pocket in. While we're on the linings, let's grab our side pieces. So these are called side panel. And again, directional blood sputter. So just make sure you've got your things up the right way. Line it up down the side. We should still be on our joining stitch length. So we're gonna stitch, back stitch. Clip. And then same with the other side. So again, blood spatter the correct way. But I'm going to stitch bottom to top because I like the smaller pieces on top so I can see them. Stitch and back stitch. I'm just holding them together but you of course can use clips. I use clips all the time. Sometimes I would still clip that for no reason other than I can. Alright, we're going to take our other main side panel and we're going to make this a complete loop. Making sure, obviously, that the top is at the top. Need to think about these things. Stick it under. Stitch, back stitch. Hold it, line it up. Stitch, back stitch. That was too much back stitching for anyone playing along at home. You don't need that many. It's just because I was going so fast, but it's not necessary. Uh, line this panel up, under we go, stitch, back stitch, back stitch, clip, okay, so now I've got most of the lining, we may as well attach the bottom. So the way I'm going to do the bottom is I'm going to fold it in half and find the center on both sides. Do that now because it's easier. Like so. And then I'm just going to pick a side, doesn't matter which one. I'm going to line up those center points and that's why we make them. And then we're just going to stitch. Now this should fit in perfectly in line with that stitching that we did. So we're just going to start on the corner, stitch, back stitch, make sure it's all lined up, and that's all we're going to do. We are not going to stitch anymore because I like to be able to turn my bags through easily, and the easiest way is to leave the whole base open. So that is your lining piece almost complete except for the zippers but I'll do them later. Next on our list, let's do our exterior because it's the big piece staring right at me. Pop that over there. Clip back in the bowl. I missed, as I'm sure you all just heard by it bouncing. Okay, so I'm going to take front side accents. There should be two. And I'm going to take front middle accent 
of which I have done in Glow in the Dark Blood Spatter Vinyl. Because why not? You know? So you can pick, it, do, it doesn't really matter which side I put them on, but I'm going to do them that side because I've got the seam allowance. So I'm just going to take this one and this one, put them together. We're doing a smaller seam allowance here. We're going to stitch. We're going to back stitch. Ooh, did you hear that? There's a knot. I heard that. It's usually the bobbin's fault. I blame the bobbin anyway. It's probably my fault, technically. User error and all that. There's now just a random knot. I'm going to cut off all of those tails because we don't need them. Okay, let's try that again. I'm going to stitch a few more stitches before I backstitch to help avoid that situation again. And backstitch at the end. Then we're going to peel back the side panel onto that seam allowance, go up to a four stitch length and top stitch it down. By doing it this way, we have less tails. Like that. Make sure your um, needle is all the way up and then throw out all those extra tails. Back to adjoining stitch length. Now again, we want to make sure that it's because it's directional, we want them facing up. Right sides together. Stitch, back stitch. Again, that was probably more back stitching than I needed, but I didn't want another notch situation. Back up to a four stitch length. Fold this over. Finger press it flat, because that's just easier. Top stitch down. Back stitch out of habit. Fabulous. That will glow in the dark. This light's probably enough. In fact, nah, it's not dark enough in here. But it is glow in the dark and it will be fabulous. Now we're going to take the front pocket aligning. So that's this piece here and put them right sides together. What has happened? I have done the wrong seam allowance. Of course I did. Why would I do such a thing? I did the wrong seam allowance, people, on my own pattern. How embarrassing. I'm not worried though. Okay, so if you do this, here's the solution. Line it up, cut off the excess. Do, 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 do. That was my bad. I should have known I wouldn't change seam allowances. And now it still works. When it's a bigger seam allowance, that's a bit of a problem. But when you've done a smaller one and then it doesn't join, simple solution, cut it down. That was not deliberate, but that is a good lesson. So now we're going to line this up. Should just stick to the seam allowance, I'm sure I did. The different seam allowance at this top bit will just make the, part of the pocket a little taller or smaller. Um, so it actually doesn't matter. I know that's a dangerous thing to say, but it really doesn't. Then I'm going to finger press this down. You can also iron it as so long as you don't touch the vinyl. And then I'm going to pinch it. We're going to clip it specifically. Whoops, not that one, apparently. I'm going to clip it in place so it stays where it's told. like that and then I'm going to go up to a four stitch length so that these stitches match the top ones. It's nice to match. Stitch, back stitch and I'm stitching an eighth of an inch or my top stitching is an eighth of an inch but if you're not comfortable doing that so close to the edge do a quarter inch. Won't hurt. Back stitch obviously. So now it's got a lining. Now, if you're using a um, pronged magnet, pop it in now. 
otherwise, oh, okay. I was right the first time. Now I'm just breaking everything. Good job, me. I've cut something wrong. Doesn't necessarily surprise me. Uh, so the bits I cut off earlier, turns out I've cut this piece wrong. Doesn't. So now, that's okay. I can fix that too. Don't stress. I'm not stressed. What I am going to do though, is I am going to tack this down in place. Again, if you're using a prong magnets, you should install it before you do this. Needle down, pick it up. So this will just be a very close seam allowance at these pieces. Again, not the end of the world, just maybe I should cut things better. Don't stress about it, I'm not stressed about it. In fact, let's fix it right now. Take your side pieces. Put my pattern pieces up there. Now, I fussy cut this guy so he was in the middle. So we're just going to put him like this. And then I'm going to break my own rules so that I figure this out properly. I'm going to put all of my clips on upside down. So that I can stitch the other way. So I can see where the edge is and make sure I just stitch slightly inside. Now this will be like probably still half an inch, but even if I go a smidgey bit over, it's not going to matter. It's the beauty of handbags, right? So we're going to start at a half inch. And then when we get to here, we're just going to veer in just that little bit more so on the inside of the stitching. It won't make as much difference as you think it will. The reason I do such big seam allowances is they are quite forgiving. So this is now probably more like 5 eighths. But not a big deal. A super duper promise. Ta-da! I mean, trust the process, but apparently also trust the fact that you will sometimes screw up. Apparently that's how today's going, and I am not recutting and redoing a video. Because I feel like this is a good teaching moment. Cut! Done and done. So there's the centre. We're finding the centre to put on another zipper pocket. Because I like zipper pockets. And so then this one, you fold it in half. The half that is drawn on, that's the side you need the bottom edge. Like that. And then place it where you want. Now on the outside I want it lower than I did on the inside. Personally, but I mean you can do it however you want. But see that? That's crooked. You need to make sure that it's straight. That's the main thing. Also, if you want to, you can put two clips here where they intersect to hold it in place. And then it can't shift as much. I mean, it still can, but just not as much. The other option is, is you use these really awesome hemming clips. Because they're so long, they'll reach all the way over here and help prevent it moving. These are awesome. Uh, I think I got these from Timu. And I'm just going to tug on that because it's a little bit crooked. But these will, the clips will hold it. So, so long as I've got it. There we go. I'm basing it down here, by the way. If you're wondering how I'm eyeballing this, down there. Yep. Good to go. You can also use an actual ruler to do that. Very clearly, I just don't, but you definitely could. So, we're gonna go into this corner, stitch, back stitch, back stitch. Now, I'm gonna do one stitch 
wider than the hole because I find it will tuck in better when I am trying to put the zipper overlay on. So sometimes I'll just do like one stitch wider than the lines because the lines are technically drawn on the inside of the box. But those hemming clips are magic for holding things in place, especially when they don't want to stay. So again, with my dodgy crooked little scissors, I'll just have a bend of spotlight to get some more. And I thought I was going to be fine with my fiskers, but apparently the stupid geckos want to eat them. And I have not, the only thing I can find on the internet to get rid of geckos is mothballs, and I do not want all my handbags and fabrics smelling like mothballs. So this is all I've got so far. I'm just going to have to throw out my scissors and be done. Okay. Triangling out those corners. You want a decent sized triangle. Don't make them like short and equilateral. That's too small. I promise. Okay. So again, I'm going to go and iron this and then I'll come back. All ironed and I put the sticky tape on the back because you saw me do that earlier and it's the same process. Just put some sticky tape on the back. And then we're going to lay that over the top. So it all lines up beautifully, like so. And then just kind of push it down. Try not to like stretch it because again, it's got some give and you might warp it out of shape. I am on whoop, a four stitch length. I'm going to grab the top so that the pocket folds down. I like to start at the top, but you can, of course, start on the bottom if that's your jam. I am not the boss of you. And around we go. Needle down. Push all the fabric out of the way. Now I can hear me running out of bobbin thread. I really hope I don't run out on here. That would suck. Pull the pocket up, make sure it's not under there. It's always that bit that I stitch accidentally. Now that I'm here and this is in front of me, Pull on that, pull the loop through the back. I've been thinking about why I made that mistake and I know the answer. Um, this is the original pattern and I designed that wrong. It's not in the nail pattern. Chop that off. Sometimes converting millimeters and inches are botch it. Push the pocket out the way. I am, after all, only human. And into the first hole. There. Pull it out. Lots of tails. Boop. But there are literally ways to fix all kinds of problems. One day I'm going to find time and show you how to fix like a whole bunch of different problems in a single video. Troubleshooting video. With solutions that don't involve unpicking everything ever. Because we all know how I feel about that. Okay, so from the outside it should now look fabulous. Again, it glows in the dark, otherwise I would have, if it didn't have glow in the dark blood spatter specifically, I would have has just done the volcano red. But I do think this is going to be so much cooler. And whoever buys it might not realise it glows in the dark. And so then you just like light up. I love that thought. Okay, so then we're just going to put the zipper pull on. Again, about a third of the way. This time I'm going to use double-sided tape so I can show you how it's done. This is one-eighth of an inch or three millimetres. And I'm just going to put it just down a little bit from the fold. You don't want this to be seen from the outside. That's why. Clip. Put 
push it down. When the end doesn't want to come up, which does happen on occasion, you just stab it with a sew all. It tends to work out great. You just need to separate that first bit of tape from the backing. And so then again, I'm going to do the same as I did before, where I lay the zipper down on the zipper teeth, pick it up, except this time when I push it down, it's going to stay where it's told because of the tape. That's all. It's also why you want the zipper tape not tucked under like that. You can lift it up and reposition it as needed. today is being very stubborn. That's alright though. Okay, so again, nice long tails. We're going to make it all invisible and fabulous. I'm having more trouble with the sticky tape than normal. There we go. Alright. Oh, I didn't check the bobbin. Last. So stitch the end where we have not yet zipped, and then you can zip the rest. Needle down, pivot over the end. Oops, too far. And then I'm going to grab this tail. Two quick light tugs. Don't pull it as hard as possible. You might break your thread. I have done that. It sucks. Then you have to stitch over a, f a few stitches and backstitch. Once you break your thread, there's no pulling it through and undoing it. Unless you unpick like a chunk so that you've got the tail to hold on to. Which is also annoying. I'd prefer to just backstitch. You can do it with like minimal, like you can do it fairly neat so it's not super noticeable. And then into that first hole so that there's no gap. There was the last of the bobbin, see? Knew it was coming. And then quick tug. Pull it through. Tie it off. So I'm doing like a double twirl. And then an extra single twirl. That tail's too long, but again, it was the end of the bobbin. So that is what it is. Oh, I don't have another one made. Let's do another bobbin. Alright, new bobbin has been achieved. So we are now going to fold that down. Fold it back and then stitch the whole zipper pocket closed with a two and a half stitch length. We don't need two openings to turn bags through. So we're just going to stitch this one shut. I always like to leave the lining one open because it's more flexible. But if you forget... You can do this one. It's just a little smidgy bit trickier, that's all. Not impossible, just, you know, different. Okay, so before I attach this piece to this piece, I should probably put my rivet magnet in. Ugh, here is my hole punch. And if you fold this down, it will then fit in. And again, I'm eyeballing it. I can eyeball everything. Maybe I won't eyeball it. It's a little bit harder to eyeball this time. I am going to use one of my friction pens though. And draw the dot. It's easier when it's flat. On this surface from this angle, it was hard to find where I wanted to line it up. But now, we're all good. So again, fold this over. You don't have to crease it, but it's just so that you can get in where you need to be. Punch a hole. And then we're going to grab all of the bits. So you should have four. Oh, we also have to install my thing on. Okay. This 
is my box of dies. I ended up getting one that clipped shut because I dropped it way too many times and then had to resort them all out. In saying that though, it is a very good learning experience to know what goes with what so that if it ever does happen, you know what's going on. But anyway, preferably don't do it would be my life advice to you. So I'm going to start with the mail. And we're going to put it on the inside here through all the layers that we punched a hole in. And I like to clip this on and then I'm going to hang this off the edge. One day I'm going to have these attached to like something so that they hang off and are stuck down. Then we put in the other half. Oh, I dropped it. Luckily, it went into the pocket. Clip on the back. Now this one, you might want to fold the vinyl or the fabric down, so again, you can get in there nicely. It clicks into place and then can't move any further. Push the button down. This one usually brings this piece with it. It's fun like that. Um, but that means it is perfectly lined up. Works every time. Love rivet magnets more than the prong ones. They hurt my hands. They're a pain to put in. I don't use them anymore. They do not exist in this sewing room. And now that we've done that, we are also going to put, so I'm going to just fold this up so we can get to it. It's not, a, like, it, it, I did do this. It's not my official normal font, but I don't think that matters. We are going to need a friction pen and my pen knife, wherever that is. There it is. Pen knife. I wonder if these come in green. I might go on a bit of a mission, see if I can find them. So I'm just going to lay it like this and then draw where the prongs are so that I know where to make my holes. That is, I'm pretty sure that's in the center. Close enough. Stab. Now I've got my fingers each side of it so that it's not a problem. And then we push this through the holes that we made, like so. Flip it over. Oh, these ones didn't come with gaskets. Okay, and then we just bend it over like that. As flat as you can get it. And then I like to take my pliers and just give it one extra little squish if you can get it in there. So I might have to sort of roll this up, as crazy as that seems. And then just squish. Same with the other side. Roll it up a little bit. And squish. looks crooked. Sometimes they do that. There we go. All's all better. Always close your pen knife. Nobody needs to get stabbed. Of which I have done to myself several times, just FYI. So now we're going to attach this outside to this edge. Side, I'm going to do just slightly bigger than the half inch, just so that the bag isn't wonky, right? It's all going to work out fine, I promise. I just don't want a wonky bag. Back stitch, trim the tails, then let's put our base in. So I did have that base in the vinyl. There is no stabilizer. You can add stabilizer if you're doing a cotton base, but because it is only such a small base, I didn't make stabilizer for it. But of course you could. You just need to do it inside these like flaps essentially. 
So it can be done if you so desire. I just didn't desire. So I'm going to line up that centre. We're going to do clips on this because exteriors always need clips. They're jerks otherwise. Because they're so stiff and all the interfacing, if you don't clip it, it likes to move around. We don't need that kind of negativity in our life today. So this should line up with the edge. And then we're going to stitch and back stitch. All the way to the end, which should be the other side seam. So it should stop right at that side seam. Then let's do the other side. So again with the clips, especially on this side, if you don't want to clip the first side, kudos to you. This one definitely wants to be clipped or it is going to try and move because it's a jerk like that because it's fighting against this curve that I'm making it do. The vinyl wants to sit flat and I'm telling it that it's not allowed to yet. And sometimes it doesn't like that. So stitch, back stitch. Along we go. Back stitch. Trim off the tails. As many as you can see. And then we're going to do the end. So the end should now also line up seam to seam. These little ends I don't need to clip, but feel free to do so if you need to. But we're basically going to go from stitch line to stitch line. And for the most part, it should line up pretty well. Like that. Clip. Tug the end out. Like that. I like to st stitch it vinyl side up, but you can flip it the other way if that's more convenient with you and your machine. It is also acceptable. Alright, so there's your exterior all made, and I promise it's going to look great when we're done. Last section is the top zipper we're going to do. So these actually join, wait, do they? Maybe they don't. Okay, these don't have, I didn't cut these to match. Therefore, it doesn't matter how I do it. So I'm just going to flip it over. And on this end, we're going to use a ruler draw a line. Technically I think this is the wrong size line, but fun fact, I don't think it's going to matter. And draw a line. Now I'm going to use double sided tape because it's my friend. so flexible guys. I feel like that's the lesson we're learning today. Alright, I am going to take little pieces of double sided tape and pop them here. I'd use quarter inch but I just run out and I don't want to pause the video to go get another roll. So this will work just as well. I'm just cutting really little pieces to stick on the end and then I'm going to peel the backing off. Now because this is all fabric I could have ironed them. I just didn't. But I definitely could have and we would have got the same results. And since I'm trialing an area and kind of just winging it, I want to try something new with the zipper. I've seen people do that on a video and I would like to see how it works. Now, that interfacing just let go so we're just gonna put a clip on it now i saw someone on the internet somewhere fold the zipper over on itself 
and then stitch it and it'll do the right hand thing. So I want to see if I can make it work. We are about to find out. So you just fold it on itself and then stitch it from there diagonally out. Or in this case, I'm going to do it the opposite way. The hardest bit, I think, is folding the zip. I have cracked it. Let's see if this worked. I saw someone do it. I mean, that was definitely quicker if it has worked. And then if you just crack the zip. Oh, would you look at that. Right angled zippers. That was cool. I like that. It's always fun to try new things. And then we're just going to separate it because I need it separated. So now if you've got a print, what we're going to do is we're going to put them like this and then we're going to put the zipper together inside it like this. And that is the edges that it's going to touch. So then I'm going to fold it right sides over, clip one in place, and then I'll add the other layer on top, which is the lining say another layer it's the lining I don't like to clip three things at once it's n it does never works that well for me ever 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 so I just don't do it you could also use double-sided tape for this join it at this end so that the folds are even which is important these should be the same size anyway but on the off chance that you folded something wrong uh, I suggest you do it that way, where you join that end. So, right sides together, folded edge at the raw edge, not the folded over edge. Work my way down. Again, could use double sided tape if you so desire. And you should have a bit hanging off the end. We're going to put a, I'm going to put a metal zipper tab on the end of that. Um, you don't have to use a metal one, you can just cut a rectangle of vinyl and pop it on there. It's what I used to do before I had fancy metal zipper ends. A lot of things can be replaced, you don't have to use all the fancy stuff. I just like to because I have it. So, now I am going to stitch the short open end and then down and stop where the fabric stops. With a quarter inch seam allowance and I'm telling you that a because it's my pattern and b because zippers are always a quarter inch seam allowance because that's literally how much space you've got to work with it's not really all that negotiable so get to the end of the fabric and stop and then I'm going to kind of push that out the way put this one under start on the fabric Try not let to let the fabric stretch either. It does, has been known to happen. Stitch the end, clip the tails at this end, and then just clip them apart without wrecking your zipper tape. One and two. Ta -da! Now you can cut this off if you want to. Uh, I don't really want to cut the zipper tape. Uh, this, even though I've done a right angle, this is going to come out curved, which is okay. Don't freak out about that. It's just because of all the bulky stuff that you've shoved in that corner. It is what it is. It'll still look fabulous. Now I'm going to go up to my top stitch and I'm going to stitch this open edge shut while lining up the lining and the exterior. You can clip this, um, and if you're new, I do recommend clipping it, but apparently I don't feel like that today. Some days I love clips, and some days I just don't want to play that game. So the reason we do this edge first is because now I can top stitch the rest and it's gonna be amazing, and these pieces are gonna be even and it's going to look its best self. You want to go slowly in this corner because there's a lot of zipper tape in there, so don't croon across that. But now, this edge is joined. And this edge, it looks fabulous with the top stitching. 
You don't have to do it this way, but this is the way that I have found the best. If you stitch this side first, then sometimes these bits won't line up. Because you can see, if I just stitch that now, this is pulling because of the seam allowance. So you want to do that raw edge first, just to make sure everything will match. And if you do it first, you'll find that everything else just kind of falls into place. So I'm just stitching it with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. You won't see it in the seam. It's just enough to look good. And then we're gonna go around that curve nice and slowly. Down the end, get to the end, pivot, sew it shut. Make sure you shut, um, shut that short end. Otherwise the fabric will come out and fray and carry on like a pork chop. Grab your lining. Now we've already found the center. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold this in half, find the center. Same with this one, find the center. And you can attach these before you make your whole lining, but I don't. You wanna go to the side that has the zipper. The zipper closes this way. So you wanna grab the piece that's gonna close the same way so you want the curvy bit on this side, line up the center, clip it in. Doo -doo, doo -doo, doo -doo. It won't go all the way to the end, it is not meant to. Uh, if you do that, you'll have problems later on. So now, whatever's left goes on the other side. That's pretty much how you sort that out. Now you can base this in place or we can just leave it clipped and then attach it to the exterior. The choice is yours. I'm putting a lot of clips. See, I've gone from no clips to all the clips. This will be very easy to turn through. And remember, we've left the bottom open. Deliberate action. Just like to point that out. The side with the zipper is the back. Uh, so this piece here is the front and I want my zip to close. So I, I put the front in front of me as if it was turned through. I want the zip to close over this side. So I shove it in so the zip will close that side. Close that way, close that way. Shove it in. I've got an itchy nose. That was fun. And then I'm gonna line up the side seam. I always do the short edge first. Probably because it's quick and easy and then it's done, but also because it's an easy way to line stuff up. Line up this edge. Clip. Clip. And then we just add all these clips. Now I'm going to make them, I'm going to spin them all around so that they're facing the lining. That is the easiest way to sew them. And the reason I like them to face the proper way is because I can pull them off while I'm sewing and moving. Otherwise you have to stop, take the clip out and continue on. Now as a beginner, you probably have to do that anyway, but as you're feeling more confident, you should try and do it while moving slowly. But it'll only work if the clips are the right way. Trust me, I've tried it the other way. It is not a fan. So now it's all clipped together, lift up the needle on adjoining stitch length, peel back the top, and we're going to stitch. Now this seam allowance here, you can do whatever you want. It will just make the bag shorter or taller uh, within reason. Obviously, if you did three inches, you'd lose your top zipper. But like you can do a quarter inch, three eighths, half, five eighths whatever floats your boat, whatever your happiest stitch length is, you can do here. It won't affect the making of the bag, it'll just make it shorter or taller by that tiny little amount, which is, you know, irrelevant a little bit. So if you have a favourite stitch length and you don't like the half inch I have chosen, you can just do your own on this particular thing. Doesn't work everywhere. Here it does. But remembering, you don't want to make it too big because then you'll lose all your top zipper. This is the 
the ideal stitch length. I'm just letting you know it is a bit flexible. So, before I turn it through, I'm going to attempt with my tiny little scissors to cut out this. Now, on my industrial machine, I don't need to do this. But if you are on a domestic, cutting out the bulk at all the seam intersections will help you with your top stitching and just make it sit neater. So, personal preference, but come chop all these bits out. It will, it will especially help on a domestic, uh, but it also just means that I don't have to grab my pliers and squish the seams. If this was vinyl, all vinyl bag, I would do it even on this machine, because nobody wants bulk in the corners, it skips stitches. So I'm gonna pick a corner, grab it, make it a puppet. You need to be able to make it a puppet. And then the turn through is super easy because we left the whole bottom of the bag open. See that? Boom. This will now be happening in all bags that I make from this point forward because it's amazing. I'm going to push that out. This seam will need a Tory squish because it's a bit, it's a bit curved at the moment. So now we have to stitch up the base. So I'm going to open the interior zipper pocket because that's the one we left open. And I'm going to grab the lining and the base and I'm just going to pull that half through the pocket like this. This is great if you struggle to birth bags. Birthing the bag can be like the most hated part for some people. I know that for a fact. This way you don't really have to birth it. I mean, you probably could pull this bag through the zipper pocket, but it's gonna be fiddly. And if you have arthritis or just poor grip strength, this is the better way. Now I'm just lining it up as I go to make sure it's gonna fit. Backstitch at the end. And then we're gonna do the short edges. So, pull it out, sit it flat, and the lining will sit super flat for you. Stitch, back stitch, stitch, back stitch. Ba, ba, ba. Other side, stitch, back stitch. And you're just going from thread to thread. And that's all. And then you can shove it all back into the zipper pocket like so. And then I'm gonna take my fingers, pinch underneath, tuck it in and stitch it down. And then we're nearly finished, nearly. We've still got a little bit of sewing to do. start rolling this you can see me rolling it back and forth it gives a cleaner line put a clip put a clip you won't be able to clip this whole section here we can only clip the short ends pretty much that's all we've got stitch length of four. Hold the bag flat. Now I'm going to use this to pull it and be flat and I'm going to top stitch. Oh no wait, these ones are going down. We're going to top stitch these down. That was close. That way they sit in nicely. Different bags, different... So I am going to do a full quarter inch because why not? Prove to you that it still looks cool. It'll be easier to stitch with all this bulk. Turn it around. Push it down. Full 
quarter inch. It's really not that much different. This is all quite bulky, so worth it in my opinion. All right, and then when we get back to the start, I am going to back stitch two stitches and then trim off the tails. It is barely noticeable. You can also tie it, but you're going to see the knot anyway. So, I mean, meh. And so now, see how the, the this will sit in? And we made the zipper pocket low enough that even though this is down, we can still get into it. And then we're going to use the awesome knife because Chucky is all about the knife. This actually works out perfectly for his bag. You don't have to use fancy zipper pulls on the whole bag. Usually the top main zipper is where you want to put it. Fabulous. So then we're going to take our zipper end. And my electric screwdriver. Now with this, I'm going to fold it into kind of a point, stuff the end in as far up as it'll go, pop this on here, flip it over, make sure it's pushed all the way in, and screw it in. Done. I'm still not finished though. Oh, I left a few bits over there. Hold on a sec. These are going to be the D-ring connectors. I am going to put just the normal color on the inside and the fancy stuff on the outside. Now, I never cut four of these because my way is easier. Um, that's gonna be too thick. All right, well, we're gonna use an eighth of an inch tape. I mean, it's really just to tack it in place anyway. So I'm putting a single strip down the center now these taper in because I've got skinnier D-rings than most of you. You guys mostly use one and three quarter inch, whereas I have decided that I will only be using five eighths of an inch from this point forward. So my patterns will come with the one inch option, or if you decide to jump on the bandwagon with me, five eighths. So I'm just going to stick these. You can line it up with an edge if you want. You don't have to. Alright, line it up, and then I'm just going to top stitch around. So, stitch, back stitch. Out. So again, these are going to glow in the dark, because that's who I am. I glow in the dark crazy person, because it's awesome. shape you want. I just decided that this was a bit more fun than a normal rectangle. The stitching is important though. It adds a layer of strength to everything. See? And now we just take scissors, which will hopefully cut, and you just cut out next to it and it will always match. Because I personally have issues cutting things perfectly. Whereas this, way easier. Maybe not with these scissors, these are ginormous. Not the smartest move, but they're the only ones I've currently got that are strong enough to cut vinyl well without it going all fluffy. We don't want that either. Now you could edge coat these if you want. In my opinion, which I don't have, you should edge coat it in glow in the dark because the vinyl glows in the dark and that would be epic. Okay, chopping off all tails that are and can be seen, put all the rubbish in the bin, grab the D ring, and 
see, so you'll see a little bit of the red peeking through, but just not much. And then we're gonna come, I'm gonna undo this, it's gonna make it easier. Pop it on here, like that. Fabulous, and I'm gonna just rivet it in place. Grab some clips. And the other one will go on the other end. And then it's just a matter of putting the hardware on our strap and we are good to go. Probably shouldn't have put this end on yet. Would have made it a little bit easier to do this, but that's all right. Apparently I like a challenge. So I want this, when I put this on, I want it to touch. I want the, the ring to touch the fabric. Like you want it on nice and firm and tight. You don't want it to be up like this. This is not what we're aiming for, or you would have just put it in the seam to begin with. Which you could do if you don't like these strap connectors. I'm just trying to do different stuff in patterns. Really? Oh, that's heavy. Okay, so, with that being said, you want to make sure that it's sitting up straight and center. And I'm going to put two clips, uh, rivets. I'm going to put one at the top, one down the bottom. But we're going to do them one at a time. And where is the hardware box? Because we're going to need rivets. I never pull the rivets out, I just leave them in the box. One. And two. Now, letting go of that is probably a mistake, but I have to do it. Because I need all my things. So we're going to need one, two, three, four. We're going to need six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. That is also for the crossbody strap, just if you were wondering why I took more than four. I can count. Method to my madness. All right, so I'm going to take this, I'm going to put it through here, and then the second hole, and then fold it over, put it through there, put the cap on, and then before I squish it, I will come back and do this one. Oh, it didn't quite cut all the way through. So when that happens, we just poke a hole, like that. Stab it through cap on. The clipping of them will just help it. And then we can come here and squish and squish. Done. Other side. This one, again, I should have done that last. I usually do do it last. I just clearly wasn't thinking. So long as you don't get the zipper, you'll be fine. I just have to keep moving it out of the way, that's all. So, through there, through there. Stab a better hole. Make sure we're not going over our zipper. This is, again, this is why we put them on last. It's why I don't put it on before we sew the bag, because it just gets in the way, man. All right, second one. Line it all up. And stab through. Shove that out the way. Rivet through the layers. Clip the back on. Bring this one over. One, okay, then we can zip it up, I really do love that knife, it is fabulous. That is the bag done, now we just need to do our, this thing. Now if you want a firmer bag, the idea of this bag was, it's not slouchy slouchy, but it's not super stiff either. If you want a firmer bag, all you have to do is add bag foam. 
Not everything, in my opinion, needs bag foam, but if you wanted that more structured, you could definitely do it. You could add another layer of interfacing. And I've just gone through the middle loop on this and then riveted it down. I like that. Then, with this bit facing up, we're gonna snip those tails. Not to be missing things. Thread this on to the solid end and then pull it to make sure that it is not twisted. Up one side, down the other. And I like to thread a fair amount through because it's just easier. Then on, fold it over and then rivet that one down. one hole, for the second hole, on the end, and press. You could also do a fusible fleece if you wanted somewhere between fabric and foam. Fusible fleece would also be a great option. But the way I've designed this bag is it's quite lightweight. And I like, I don't always want to carry a big heavy bag when it's empty. Because as you fill it, it only gets impossibly heavy. So, swivel clips means that you can just keep twisting and twisting and it'll be fine. But that is the bag. So you can see here how this is rolling. All I need to do is put it in there and then manhandle it into submission. You wanna create a crease in the vinyl. That's what we're doing here. Creating a crease in the vinyl so it sits flatter. See, already sits flatter. But there you go guys, that's pretty much it. I love this bag. Um, it will be up for sale because I just don't need a new handbag this week and I do have more of this fabric if I ever change my mind. I will see you in the next video everyone. Bye.